Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark greeting cards bring you Mr. Victor Moore in Old Man Minnick by Edna Ferber on the Hallmark Playhouse. Each week, Hallmark will bring you Hollywood's greatest stars in outstanding stories chosen by one of the world's best-known authors, the distinguished novelist, Mr. James Hilton. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is James Hilton. Tonight on our Hallmark Playhouse, it's our pleasure to offer a dramatization of an exceptionally fine short story called Old Man Minnick by one of America's most deservedly popular writers, Miss Edna Ferber. In this story, Miss Ferber turns away from the larger pictures of American life for which she is best known and concentrates on a winsome and delicate portrayal that is, in my opinion, one of the finest things she's ever done. Old Man Minnick has a haunting and moving quality that I think listeners will not forget. And it has also a humor that keeps tears and laughter close together all the time. Perhaps only a writer knows how difficult this is to achieve and how rarely it's done with complete success. In tonight's characterization of the name part, Old Man Minnick himself, we are additionally lucky to have with us Mr. Victor Moore, who tells me this is just about his 25,000th public performance. 25,000th? And now, Frank Goss, how about a few words about Hallmark? For a Christmas greeting your friends will long remember, make your selections now from the complete Hallmark collection on display at the Friendly Store where you buy Hallmark cards. Whatever your taste, whatever your budget, you'll take special pride in sending Hallmark cards. And on the back of every one is the identifying Hallmark that says, you cared enough to send the very best. <laughs> Hallmark Playhouse, starring Victor Moore in Old Man Minnick by Edna Ferber. <laughs> Chicago, 1922. An elderly gentleman enters the grand home for aged gentlemen. A handsome old boy he is, ruddy, hale, with the zest of a juicy old apple, slightly withered, but still sappy. He crosses the cheery lobby and approaches the desk clerk. My name is Minnick, Thomas Minnick. Do you have a vacancy? How old are you, Mr. Minnick? Seventy, but I'm still going strong. I hope you won't mind a few questions. We have to have certain information before we can admit you. Any children? Well, I have my son George and his wife Nettie here in Chicago. And they're not able to support you? Oh, yes. But let me explain. You see, my wife... You have a wife? No. Ma died about nine months ago. You know, she... Spoiled me something awful. Always did. Take a little thing like the pillows. I used to insist that I couldn't sleep unless I had two pillows. Ma knew that I always threw one out during the night, but she let me have two. We were married 40 years when Ma had those two pillows all to herself. Three months of suffering, but not complaining. She always had a smile for me when I came into her room. Hello, Ma. Gosh, you're beautiful. After 40 years of marriage, I think you'd be getting a new line, Pa. Well, in 40 years, I never found a new word for beautiful. Politician. Pa, promise me something. Anything, beautiful. Keep 
eating good. Eggnogs, hot toddies, plenty of rich, good gravy, and meat, and puddings. Well, as long as you keep cooking them, I'll keep eating them. And uh, those little grease spots you, you get on your coat. Oh, I'm not worried. You'll get them off. Don't take them to the cleaners. Don't let Nettie do it. What's Nettie got to do with my spots? You'll be living with George and Nettie. They're our children. You won't be lonesome with them. Oh, no. I always planned on doing all my living with you. You've given me a full life. Don't worry, Pa. And you'll have the dog for company, too. Pal's getting old, Pa. Don't give him those bones anymore. Ma, I don't like the way you're talking. You're talking nonsense. <laughs> you know, when your jaw sets like that, that dimple in your cheek makes you look almost roguish. You're going to get well, and we're going to take a trip to California. I've always wanted to see California. Well, they we're going to California, it's decided. Pa... You've always had your way. Why should I argue with you now? You're darn tootin'. California, here we come. George, I... I just can't understand. I always figured I was going first. I know how you feel about Mom. But you have to face reality, Dad. I've sold the house. You'll have an income of 500 a year. Nettie and I have talked it over, and we want you to move into our apartment with us. That's right, Father. We want you to feel what's ours is yours. Well, thanks, Nettie. I, I won't be in your way. Besides, I'm pretty handy with a hammer. Remember the woodshed I built for Mom last year? Of course, the door didn't work, but it sure was a good-looking shed. <laughs> now, Dad, take it easy. Relax. We don't expect you to work for your keep. Father, we would have given you the front bedroom, but the one in back is so small, we couldn't get the twin beds in there. Oh, the back bedroom's fine, Nettie. I'm grateful. You know, a man's twice blessed when he gets married and has a child. Now, you've been married three years, Nettie. When are you and George going to... Father, uh, I put two pillows on your bed, just like Ma used to. Gosh, you're thoughtful. Pal can sleep with me. Pal? Oh, but, Father, we can't have a dog here. They don't allow them in apartments. But Pal's been with us for 15 years. Dad, we have a lease. We couldn't move just on account of a dog. Well, that sort of puts me in an awful spot, doesn't it? Well, you could give him to a friend, couldn't you? Nobody would take him. He's too old. Well, that's just it, Father. He's so old. Wouldn't it be better to do the humane thing? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. I could understand it better if somebody wanted to do that with me, but not with Pal. <laughs> I don't think he's ready to die or he would have died. But, Dad, you, you could put him in a good animal shelter. No, I couldn't do that either. That's just like sending them to an old man's home. Now, Father, we have to be sensible about this. Dogs are treated very kindly at the shelter. Yeah, but how much love do they get? Ah, wonderful dinner, Nettie. How about you, Henry? Grace? Have enough? No, plenty, oh, thanks. Oh, yes, fine. Well, I, I might have just one more piece of that ham. Father. Maybe a few sweet potatoes. Well, Father, you can have the ham if you want it, but you've had 1,200 calories already. I have? They sure cram a lot of those calorie things into a little piece of ham, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> you just listen to Nettie, Mr. Minnick. Calories are important. Yep, I guess so, I feel like one big, healthy calorie. <laughs> well, shall we go into the front room, everyone? Well, fellas, how about this three-handed pinochle game? Dad, the hunters dropped over to play bridge. Father doesn't play bridge. 
The evening paper's on the stand. Well, sit by the big lamp, Father. It's better for your eyes. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. I can hear pretty good, too. Come on, got the card table set up. Shuffle, Nettie. Nettie, have you heard? Alice Roberts is expecting again. <laughs> She's the type. Not me. I just like to enjoy my home and rest for a while. Anyway, who can afford to have a child these days? Well, if everybody waited until they could afford it, we'd have nothing but Rockefellers and Morgans around. <laughs> oh, maybe in a year or two, Father. Uh, you know, with a little cooperation, I could have been a great-great-grandfather by now. Two clubs. Let's cut out the gab and play a little bridge. Two no trumps. I pass. Say, George, how do they feel down at your office about the prospects for next year? Not good, Henry. I don't agree with them. I remember back in 98... Four spades. Well, Father, times have changed since 98. You've been out of touch with business too long. I pass. Pass? And by me. Uh, you never get out of touch with things when you keep your mind active. I've had a lot of time lately to think. Oh, if everybody will be quiet, I'll concentrate on this hand. Nettie, I'll be quiet. I'm the dummy. Uh, you're wrong, George. That's me. If you're all excuse me, I'll be going to my room, huh? I'll see you later. Well, Father, dear, will you tell Mrs. Thistlewaite that she can go home as soon as she's finished? Yeah, sure, Nettie. I'll tell her. Oh, uh, Mrs. Thistlewaite. Now, what are you staring at? That's ham you have in your hand, isn't it? Yes, and it's going right into the icebox. Mrs. Thistlewaite, is there any room in the icebox for me? Now, oh, look here, Mr. Minnick. It's my duty to protect this ham and save it for tomorrow's dinner. No, absolutely no. Well, you know, next tomorrow, I think you're the greatest cook I ever knew. Compliments will get you nowhere. Thick piece. Yeah, about 5,000 calories and about 1,000 calories of gravy, please. There you are. Now start eating before I change my mind. Well, when I'm finished, can I help you with the dishes? Why, well, I should say not. That's my job. Ah, that's the trouble. Everybody around here has a job but me. I'm tired of doing nothing, and I miss my dog. Now, stop feeling sorry for yourself. Besides, Miss Nettie told me she loves to have you around. Oh, Nettie, I, I was just telling Mrs. Thistlewaite about going home after she finished the dishes. <laughs> well, Father, you did get that extra ham, didn't you? Well, I just took one bite. I'll put it away. Oh, no, Father. Anytime you feel you don't get enough, I want you to help yourself. No, no, I'm not hungry, I... I think I'll go to my room and turn oh, father, in. Father, I meant to tell you, I took one of your pillows away. But I can't sleep unless I have two. Now, Father, you always push one on the floor every night and you know it. Good night. I'm all for going in there and telling her a few things. Oh, Nettie's all right. She's doing everything she can for me. But, gosh, the worst thing that can happen to a man is to be treated old. Mr. Minnick, would you like to help me with the bastings on Miss Nettie's dress here? Yeah, delighted. Of course, I expect to get regular assistant sewer's wages for this, Miss Cora. Well, I guess you don't need any wages. I guess you're pretty well fixed. Oh, I, I got an income. I can't complain. Complain? Well, I should say not. With me, it's different. Work all day to keep myself and nobody to come home to at night. Widow, ma'am? Yes, yeah, since I was 20. Work, work. That's all I've had. And lonesome. I don't suppose uh, you know what lonesome is. Oh, don't I? Well, uh, maybe you do. <clears throat> I uh, suppose living here like this with a son and daughter-in-law ain't so grand for all your money. Yeah, with an income like mine, I ought to spend my winters in the south of France. Ever been? A... You ever been in France? No, I've never been any place. Just work, work. But I've always managed to keep my own little place that I could call home to come back to. Have uh, men friends in the evenings? Oh, no. Evenings, I just cook and fuss around. Nobody to fuss for. But I uh, fuss anyway. Cooking, that's what I love to do. Yeah, eggnogs, hot toddies, rich gravy and meats and pudding. Oh, you bet. Plenty of good food. 
That's what folks need to keep their strength up. <laughs> uh-huh. I, I could sure use a little strengthening up myself. Uh, Thomas, you're making an awful mess of those bastings. Here, let me show you how. Uh-huh. 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 Well, uh, that's the way I was doing it. No, you weren't. Let me guide your hand. All right. Say, your hand's cold. <laughs> cold hands, warm heart, Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, you need somebody to love you. Huh? Somebody to do for you and love you. That's right. It was fate that brought me here to sew for Miss Nettie. You've just been waiting for me. Yes, I certainly have. I just been waiting for you to get out, woman. Jasper, trying to hook me while you old... Well, you can just stay here in your little old back bedroom until you creak. You look spry, Mr. Minnick, but you're just a cantankerous old man. And you talk too much. Goodbye! Ma, she wanted to marry me. How about that? There's no fool like an old fool. And she was awful old. In a moment, James Hilton will return to present the second act of Old Man Minnick, starring Victor Moore. It always seems that no matter how carefully you plan, you need additional Christmas cards to fill out your list or take care of last-minute requirements. And that's why it's such a good idea to have several boxes of assorted Hallmark Christmas cards on hand. One popular collection features the work of Norman Rockwell, pictures of kindly old St. Nicholas, of Tiny Tim, and other familiar Christmas characters painted with the gentle humor that has made Norman Rockwell America's favorite illustrator. There's a collection of snowy New England winter scenes by Grandma Moses with a special present for you, an enlargement of one scene to frame and keep. Still other Hallmark box assortments bring you old-time prints by Courier and Ives, friendly verses by Edgar A. Guest, cards for children to send and receive. You'll find many other assortments, too, at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. And here's a pleasant surprise. Hallmark box assortments are not nearly as expensive as they look. One assortment gives you 12 winter scenes for only 50 cents. And then there's the big family special assortment, 22 different Hallmark Christmas cards for only $1. In fact, the variety and economy of Hallmark box assortments show that whatever your taste, whatever your budget, there are Hallmark cards that you'll be proud to send. Cards your friends will be proud to receive, too, for when they see the Hallmark on the back, they'll know you cared enough to send the very best. Now back to James Hilton and Act Two of Old Man Minnick by Edna Ferber, starring Victor Moore. At the Grand Home for Aged Gentlemen, Old Man Minnick continues unfolding his story to the desk clerk. Yes, sir, the roughest winter of my life. Storm outside, cooped up all day with women, small talk, reading papers and magazines over and over. Oh, Nettie was kind. I got three square calories a day and one pillow at night. Then spring, I could get outdoors. I hot-footed it over to the Alamo shelter to see Pal. I took him for a little walk through Washington Park. <laughs> Say, you're awful fat and sassy for an old hound. Ah, now, don't give me that droopy ear. I saw you when I came into the shelter to get you. You were jumping and sniffing like you were born yesterday. Is it spring or... Do you kind of like where you're living? Seems like you'd miss me a little bit. Of course, I realize you've got all your pals over there to wag tails with. You've got the run of the place, you old mutt. 
that you're not very tactful. You could give me the lonesome look. Pretend a little. I hear you haven't even inquired once how I am. Hey, pal. Guys, now you come here. Well, if I have to chase you, I can still do it. Pardon me, fellas. Did you see an old shepherd dog by here? Huh? Dog? Sure, he's sitting right over there by Hoskins. Why don't you sit down beside him? You're more winded than he is. Well, thanks. Uh, uh, well, uh, don't let me interrupt your conversation. As if you could. Hoskins, as I was saying, there'll never be a better ball player than Ty Cobb. By any chance, have you seen this boy, Babe Ruth? Oh, who's talking about home runs? Cobb's a clutch hitter. Ruth looks better striking out than when Cobb hits a double. Ah. Well, you can say what you want. These boys are all washed up. There's a rookie coming up you want to keep your eye on, Carl Hubble. Hubble? Oh, how can you whisper his name in the same breath with a big leaguer like Ruth? I ain't whispering, and I'm sharpening. Well, how can you compare them? Hubble's a pitcher. And a hitting pitcher. Besides, he... Did you ever hear of a player named Hans Wagner? Well, oh, that's, uh, that's different. Wagner. That's different. <laughs> say, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Minnick. Uh, mine's Colton. Uh, you don't live at the Grant Home, uh, do you, Minnick? No, the Grant Home? Uh, well, we like to call it the club. The Grant Home for Aged Gentlemen. Oh, no, no, I don't live there. I'm with my son and his wife. Uh, they wouldn't give me a living. They wouldn't let me live in a place like... I mean, they they wouldn't hear of me being anywhere but with them. <laughs> like to be independent myself. Lonesome, ain't it? Over at the Grant Home? Lonesome? See, I never was lonesome in my life, except for six months when I lived with my daughter and her husband and their five kids. Yes, sir. That's what I call lonesome. Well, I, I guess my children are more understanding. I'm completely happy with them. What do you do for excitement at the club? Uh, anything we like. Smoke, play pinochle, shoot a little pool, shoot the bull... Right now, some of the boys are getting up a minstrel show. You don't say. Yeah. Well, I used to sing a little. Huh? Not baritone. Down by the old... Hold it! Mill. Boys, back him up. Down, Down by, by the, the old, old <laughs> mill street. Take it, minute. Where I first met you. Say you're in minute. <laughs> Be here for rehearsal tomorrow. Yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here every day. You fellas talk my language. You're here every day, aren't you? Yeah, well, as uh, long as the weather's nice, uh, when winter comes, we just do our cutting up inside the grand home. Hey, yeah, from the look on your face, you're afraid of winter. Well, why don't you come and move in with us? No, no, I couldn't. No, why not? Be independent. Nobody to tell you what you can or you can't do. No, nobody to tell me what I can do, but I'm sure George and Nettie wouldn't want me to live in any public house. Uh, that's what I said before I moved. I've never been so happy in my life. Oh, thanks, Colton, but you don't know my children. They just wouldn't have it. But I'll be here tomorrow and the next day and the next. And when winter comes... You look like Mr. Spring himself. Oh, hello, Mrs. Thistlewhite. Got a little piece of fresh apple pie. No, thanks. Now, that isn't the real you speaking. You'd better eat this whole pie. Well, uh, let me open this kitchen door and see if Nettie is occupied with her friends. She was kind of on the warpath this morning. Of course, if it weren't for Father Minnick, I would have. But how can we as long as he lives with us? There isn't room. And we can't afford a bigger place and more rent in these times. This way, it wouldn't be fair to the child. We've talked it over, George and I. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Minnick. I'm mighty sorry for her. Ah, uh, the old have to make way for the young. They have a right to be born. An old man like me is holding up progress. I could get out of the way. It would be easy. Hey, look out! You trying to get yourself killed? Better let me help you across the street. No, I'm not trying to get myself killed. I, I like living. I like the park and the trees and the club, the talk, the whole show. Stop by the Grand Hope for aged gentleman about a month and hear me sing in a minstrel show. Sign here, Mr. Minnick. You're now a guest of Grant's home for aged gentlemen. Oh, thanks. Oh, would you tell the housekeeper two pillars on my bed? And there'll be room for my dog, please. Yes, sir. Can I show you your room? No, no, that, that can wait. Right now, I'm going back to see Nettie. I owe it to her to tell her that I'm moving out. And I'm going to tell her right in front of her friends. It'll embarrass her. All right, but then it'll save a lot of explaining later on. I, I don't think she'll be able to put off having that baby any longer. Say, mister. Yes, sir? Tell Colton and the boys to wait for me. I, I'll be right back. Down by the old mill stream. Before James Hilton and Victor Moore return, I'd like to tell you about a very special collection of Christmas cards. They're hallmark Christmas cards for men who love the out of doors, illustrated with familiar hunting scenes, with game birds in their native settings, with the gun dogs that are such faithful companions in the field. And the illustrations are as authentic as they are beautiful, for they're done by celebrated painters of sporting scenes. You'll find a wide selection of these Christmas cards for men to send and receive at the friendly store where you buy Hallmark cards. And remember, when friends glance at the back of these fine cards and see the Hallmark, they'll know you cared enough to send the very best. Here again is James Hilton. Victor Moore, you've given me an experience I shan't ever forget. And I don't think our listeners will either. Thank you for it on behalf of all our Hallmark family everywhere. Well, it's been a pleasure to be with you, Mr. Hilton. I, I like your Hallmark Playhouse. It provides so much variety in stories and acting roles. You must appeal to a great many people, like those fine greeting cards of yours. Well, yes, that's what we try for, on the Hallmark Playhouse and with everything else the Hallmark people do. And now about next week. We've something rather special, a real first in radio. It's a true story by Hollister Noble called Woman with a Sword, and it stars that dynamic actress Ida Lupino. So please don't miss it. And the following week, we have another treat in store. It's a story by Robert Finch called The Desert Shall Rejoice and stars another fine Hollywood actor, John Hodiak. Until next Thursday, then, this is James Hilton saying good night. Look for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember Hallmark cards when you care enough to send the very best. This is Frank Goss saying good night. This program came to you from the Hallmark Playhouse. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.